Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to the talk titled Git in 10 minutes. Uh, alternative title was Mission Impossible, as you've already seen, but let's try. So I want to start by saying that for me personally, the concept of version control is just amazing. It is very simple. You make some changes, you store them. You make some more changes, you store them. You make some more changes, you store them. It's really that simple. But it opens a whole new world of possibilities. Like, for example, the WordPress project itself, it just couldn't exist without version control tools that enable developers to collaborate on this project. Another great example is Wikipedia. Like, uh, if you have a good way to compare revisions and undo stupid stuff, you can open this encyclopedia to the entire world and create something very new from what used to be uh, available in the past. So really simple concept, very great consequences. So uh, let's look at an example from WordPress itself. This is actually the first time commits ever created for WordPress, tracked by subversion. So it's been over 14 years ago that uh, guys called Matt and Mike Little created these 10 commits. It's an actual history. You can still diff what, what was going on there. So here's a changing uh, uh, link to support forums, for example. Uh, you can see that in subversion, all commits are versioned by uh, natural numbers, like 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. That is because uh, when you work with subversion, it uses a centralized model. There is uh, somewhere on the internet, there is a subversion uh, repository. And when you make some changes, when Matt did some change or Mike did some change, they send it over the internet to this central server, and it maintained the history. Git is very different. With Git, uh, you have the entire repository available locally for you. That means that if you today clone uh, the WordPress Git repository, you will get all 14 years worth of commits available locally. So you can inspect the history locally, create commits, uh, work offline in a train, something like that. So it's a really powerful concept. You can see that uh, the server is missing from this slide. Usually in practice, you have some sort of central location because it's just easier to coordinate work if you have a uh, central location. But as far as Git is concerned, this is just another copy of the repository. They are technically the same. So uh, let's quickly go through the core commands. I'll be using this amazing web application. I'll share the slides. If you're starting with Git, I encourage you to visit this website. Uh, it is really lovely. On the left side, you have a simplified console. It is not the full commands you need to write, but it's pretty close. And on the right, you see visual representation of what's going on inside. And I personally find it very helpful to, to have a, a visual image of what is going on. So, Probably the very basic command is just to commit some work. You edit some file, for example, on, on, on file system, and then call git commit to create commits. So I've created three of those, and it's just three bubbles. Uh, you, you can notice that uh, git doesn't use nice numbers like one, two, three, four. It is for a good reason. This is actually a hash of the change itself. So later, when git will synchronize the repositories, it will know that when it sees two same hashes, it's the same change, and it doesn't need to transfer the data. When it sees a, a new hash, a new number, uh, it will need to synchronize. So this is quite important. It, it is getting some, uh, you need to get used to this. Uh, some people don't like it about Git at first, but um, after some time, it's a very natural concept. Like, why should it be numbered one, two, three? It's just random numbers, you know? So if you view WordPress history on GitHub, you will see these uh, hashes. So another powerful concept is branching and merging. This is probably what made Git um, popular, or the other way around, Git popularized this workflow. It was possible before, but it was quite hard. Git makes it really simple and mainstream. So whenever you are going to do some work, you should create a branch for the task. You can break things there. You can clean up later, whatever. So uh, it is like your place to, to make work. And later, when you're happy with the changes, you merge them back. So, so the merging is what Git made really simple. Um, so it's just Git merge. Another useful command is git reset, uh, which enables you to go to any point of history. You can go back, like in this case. If the merge didn't work, you simply reset to previous state. You can also go forward, so whatever was tracked in Git, you can jump to. You can jump to 14 years ago, for example, or to yesterday, to any state, really. 
Uh, and the last important concept is synchronizing repositories. So in this case, we will have like Matt's repository will be the local one. We will be looking at the problem from Matt's uh, point of view. And let's say that the remote repository is Mike's. Uh, it would, in practice, probably be something like GitHub, but let's stay with a friendly face. So if we compare the hashes, like the first commit has the same hash, so Git has, sees no need to synchronize those. Those are the same. However, the other one has different uh, hash, so it will need to synchronize this. So first, Matt tries to push to the remote repository, but it is rejected because there is something incompatible, something new on the uh, remote uh, repository. So what Matt needs to do is to pull first, and uh, this, will, this will bring this single commit from the remote repository to the local repository, and the second step is combining the local work with whatever came from the remote. So it's basically a git pull is fetching commits from remote and merging them with the local work. And I think after this, you can push, and you have basically the same state locally and in the remote repository, so everything is synchronized. With this, I believe we have covered like 80% of what you need to know to start with Git. So you commit to store the state in a Git repository. You push and pull to synchronize your work with remote repository, whether it's your colleague or GitHub or Bitbucket or GitLab or your own server, whatever. Uh, and then you branch and merge. And this is, I, I believe, like 80% of what you use in practice. This site is amazing, so please try it if you're starting. It's a very good introduction. So let's spend how, how much time do we have? Three minutes, OK. So let's spend some time uh, talking about Git plus WordPress. So if you do any sort of plugin or theme development, you should definitely be using version control. Like, there is probably no excuse not to. Do yourself a service, invest like half a day a day to, to learn the basics and start using version control. It will, it will be greatly beneficial for you. But what about the full site? I mean, both the files and possibly the database. Sometimes you need to change options. Sometimes you need to create new content in the database. Databases are very unfriendly to version control. So really, it's complicated. Uh, you have basically two options today. The first one is revisor. What Revisor does is it exports the database to a dump, and it commits the dump to the database. So it's sort of like a backup, but instead of packing everything into a zip file, you commit it to the Git repository. It is very useful. You can push to GitHub, for example, to have a remote backup. What it cannot really do is branching and merging, because the dumps are a huge pile of some data, and when you try to merge those two dumps, it will end up, you will end up with a lot of conflicts. So Good backup solution, but not really merging solution. Uh, what we are working on is something called version press. Version press watch, uh, works by observing every change to a site. So if you add a post, it will create a commit behind the scenes. If you delete the user, it will create a commit. If you update a plugin, it will create a commit. And for every such action, you have the undo button. So you can see version press as the undo button for WordPress, but it's powered by Git. And behind the scenes, it's a true Git. So you can use all the Git clients you know. The other important point about this is it can do actually branching and merging. So for example, when you do staging, uh, creating staging environment is easy. You just copy the website. But what is usually hard, you, you do some changes in staging. And the production environment also receives some new comments or posts, something like that. So you cannot easily replace the production database with the staging one. So with version press, you can just merge those together. It can do database merging. Uh, I'll be available at the expert bar after this, so, uh, or at the real bar in the evening. So if you want to come chat about this a little bit more, uh, I'll be available. There is not enough time to do more. So with this, a quick summary. Uh, if you don't use version control, really start, at least for your plugin and themes. Git and GitHub is the simplest start today. And if you want to do full WordPress versioning, you have two options, basically, Revisor and version press. So that's it. Thank you.